In this demonstration, we're going to be configuring an iSCSI target. And we will see how to add the iSCSI target server role and create two iSCSI virtual disk and an iSCSI target. You want to click on Manage, Add Roles and Features. We click Next on the Before You Begin box. We click Next on the Role-Based or Feature-Based installation. Select the server. Under Server Roles, we need to click on File and Storage Services. Then click on File and iSCSI Services. And let's pause here a minute to look at the description. The description says, File and iSCSI services provides technologies that help you manage file servers and storage, reduce disk space utilization, replicate and cache files to branch offices, move or fail over a file shared to another cluster node, and share files by using the NFS protocol. Next, we want to click on the next tab. And we want to click on install. And we can see the installation beginning. Once that installation has completed, we're then going to create two iSCSI virtual disk and an iSCSI target. We want to pause until the installation has completed. We see that the installation succeeded and now we can close the box. We now want to go to File and Storage Services, and we want to click on iSCSI. In the iSCSI, before we click on Task, we see here that in order to use virtual disk, we have to install the iSCSI target server role. So let's click to install iSCSI target server role. So we're going to go for the iSCSI target server role. We're going to expand iSCSI services. We have the file server role installed. Next, next, install. We can see here that we are ready to create the iSCSI virtual disk. And we can click on start the new iSCSI virtual disk wizard, or we can come to task, click on task, and say new iSCSI virtual disk. And you will see that you're presented with the wizard. So we actually have to put in the settings that we want, and we have to choose the volume that we want to create the virtual disk on. And let's select E as the volume that we want to create the virtual disk on. And we click on Next. Then we have to type the name of the iSCSI disk. So we're going to call it IS iSCSI. Disk one, and then we want to click on next. You can see here the path for the disk that we're creating. You want to click on next, and you want to get the size of the disk. And we're gonna use let's say we use five gig for the disk. And here you have the choice of using dynamically expanding or difference in disk. We're going to use fix size for our example. We're going to 
going to click on next. And here it says, assign this, I just can't see Virgil, this to an existing target or create a new target for it. So we're going to do a new target. So click on next. And here you want to give the target name. So we're going to call the target name server 2012 which will be the server that the target will be on. We click next. And here we have to add or specify the initiator that will access this iSCSI virtual disk. So we want to click on add. And what's going to happen here is that we're going to query the initiator computer for the ID. And this feature is not supported on Windows Server 2008 R2, Windows 7, or earlier. At this point, you can browse for the initiator computer, or you can select from the initiator cache on the target server. We're now going to enter the ID, which would be the server name. And we want to click on OK. And can we see here that we have the server name? And this is the initiator, the computer that will access the iSCSI virtual disk. I want to click on Next. And here you see, um, because we are using iSCSI, we are able to enable security. So we can enable security by enabling CHAP. We can put a username and a password. So let's put a username, user1. And get user one and we want to put a password and let's try that again password must be at least 12 characters long so let's try that Confirm it. And click on next. And here we come to the confirmation screen where you need to look at all your settings and make sure that the settings are correct before you create. Once the settings are correct, correct you want to click on create. And you can see the task running. And they're going to run one by one until they are completed. We can now see that the task is completed and we can close. At this point, we can now go to the initiator and from the initiator window, we can then connect to the virtual disk on the target server. That's the end of this presentation. Thank you for listening.